Hello and welcome to Newstock Markets. The Financial Conduct Authority, which regulates the crowdfunding sector, has warned investors that it's risky, with the message you are very likely to lose all your money, presumably because most startups fail. But UK equity crowdfunding is a fast growing market. Last year it raised £84 million. That's up from £3.9 million in 2012, according to Nesta, an innovation charity. Yet there is still a big difference between deals offered to institutional investors and those offered to the crowd. Well, here to talk about more innovative routes to raising capital is crowdfunder Syndicate Room's co-CEO, Gonzalo de Vasconcelos. You think there's a, a big difference, don't you, between not the kind of investors that are crowdfunding, but the companies that you need to invest in if crowdfunding is going to last? Yes, correct. So I believe that for, for crowdfunding to last, uh, it has to be sustainable. And for it to be sustainable, investors have to make money in the long run. Because there will always be companies looking for funding. There will never be lack of companies in need for capital to grow. But in terms of having investors to keep on investing, they need to make money in the, in the long term. They need to keep on uh, having a, a financial return so that they recycle capital and they keep on investing so that equity crowdfunding is still around in 20 years time and uh, instead of delivering 80 odd million pounds per year we'll be delivering one, two, three, five billion pounds a year into innovative UK companies. So you think that crowdfunding has got some potential as a market to, to grow more and, and faster? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. As long as it's sustainable and as long as it works for investors it can be Massive, it can be huge. Uh, angel investment in the UK is around one billion a year. Venture capitalists invest about three billion pounds a year, and these are uh, these are data from several different reports. And there's no reason why uh, equity crowdfunding can't deliver one, two, three, five billion a year into UK companies uh, in, in five to twenty years' time. So, does it take a, a certain type of investor? Because you know, you, you hear about schemes being built to, to raise funds for breweries and for, for coffee shops and, and things like that and often it's with some small change so it can sometimes seem like a bit of a punt. There, so there, <coughs> it's important to distinguish between two types of equity crowdfunding. One is the company-led um, uh, crowdfunding which is the one you're talking about where typically much smaller investors put very small amounts of money uh, typically from ten pounds upwards into breweries, coffee shops and, and other startups. Then there's the, the type of crowdfunding that uh, Syndicate Room uh, has created in the, in the UK, which is the investor-led crowdfunding. And that means that every deal on, on the platform has to have a professional uh, lead investor investing their own money in at least 25% of the funding round. And what that makes is that you have these very experienced investors putting huge amounts of their own money in and they set the investment terms for that funding round. You talk about experienced investors, can you give me an example of a crowdfunding scenario where there was a big opportunity for small time investors? Mm. Uh, so we recently had Pulseflow uh, invest raising over £1.2 million via Syndicate Room and Pulseflow is a, is a great example of that where an incredibly well known uh, investor called Jim Mellon was the lead investor for that funding round. And then our members were able to invest upwards from £1,000, which is our minimum investment, alongside Jim Mellon. Same class of shares, so same price per share. So our, our vision is that on a pound per pound invested, it doesn't matter if you invest £1,000 or a £1 million, everybody will make or lose the same amount of money. So there's opportunity there for, for rookie investors. Correct, it is, uh, but they, the type of investors need to be uh, a lot more sophisticated than just rookie investors because they need to understand the risks associated with this type of investment because a lot of the companies will fail, it's just the nature of this type of investment and the way it works it's typically on a portfolio approach on how some uh, very big successes cover for the losses and then some more. It's exactly what business angels have been doing for decades in the UK with an um, annual return according to Nesta of 22% every year. I can see the opportunities for, for investors, but what, what's in it for the companies? Why, why would they do it? Is, is it a quicker way of, of getting cash? It, it, it certainly seems riskier. It is for the companies. For the companies, it is a very efficient way of raising cash. There was an, an incredibly interesting report by Shari Kutu, which is Scale Up, and it's all about companies looking for capital to grow. So they've passed, they've gone over that hurdle of starting up. 
they already have customers. Now they need a serious amount of capital. And we're talking about typically more than half a million pounds to grow, to scale up, and to really create hundreds of jobs in the next three to five years. And that's really where this, uh, this investor-led crowdfunding sits so comfortably, because you have highly experienced investor validating the funding round, risking their own money, and then the crowd can uh, effectively invest alongside them with the same class of shares and same price per share. So complete fair game for all the investors involved. And of course they save some money by not raising those funds by going to market. Well, Gonzalo, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thanks so much. Thank you very much.